Hello and welcome to your next piano lesson here at Musicians Edition. As always, I'm Evan and I'll be your teacher. So, last video I uploaded was a nice beginner play along. A lot of good exercises to work on that finger strength and coordination. And I hope you had fun learning some new exercises there, piecing things together, because today is your worst nightmare. No, only kind of serious. Because today is super important, just not quite that fun. We've knocked out some great introductory stuff that will get you playing nice on the piano, like the chords and scales. Now, we're going to break down the grand staff and all the necessities to be able to read music and perform. That means the staff itself, the two clefs, note values, measures and bars, all that good stuff you don't understand. I could be saying whatever right now. We're gonna go from super basics and build up more with each lesson here, so it's not so overwhelming. So let's just start off by looking at a typical piece of music. Here's a version of a song that I've been learning recently. To you though, it looks like complete gibberish. There's a bunch of lines with weird looking shapes. There's numbers, there's dots with sticks attached to them all over the place. But when you put it together and when you learn how to read it, it sounds like this. And so on. Nice, right? So. Today is the first step to you being able to read and play just like I did there. Again, we're gonna break down these elementary pieces and keep adding more and more until we can put all of this together. Let's go ahead. The first place to start is with the lines that the notes are placed on top of. It's called the staff. Again, the staff is where the notes are placed and depending on where the note is placed determines what key on the piano that will play. Our staff has five lines and four spaces where notes can be placed. The note can be on a line or on a space. So a note can be on the third space or the fourth line and so on. Any one of those five lines and four spaces. A little tricky, but when we count these, we can count from the bottom up. We don't go top to bottom. We're gonna count from the bottom and work our way up. So that fourth line is the fourth line from the bottom. That third space, the third space from the bottom. And that bottom line is the first one. So here's an example we're gonna look at. We have faces on various lines and spaces. The first one is on the, let's count, one, two, third line. Then, fifth line, second space, third space. All right, I'm not losing you yet, am I? Because you are probably wondering how this translates to the piano. Each space or line we just numbered is a note on the piano. But all the notes on the piano cannot be covered by just one staff. So two staffs are combined to make the grand staff. The grand staff is just these two staffs. It's one for each hand to follow. The right hand uses the staff on top. The left hand uses the staff on the bottom. Each one is labeled with a symbol on the left side to be able to tell them apart. The one on the top is called the treble clef. And that's the one you're gonna play with your right hand. The right hand gets the treble clef. The one on the bottom is called the bass clef, which is what the left hand will play. So right hand plays treble clef, or the top one here. Left hand plays the bass clef, or the bottom one here. A little trick here, is we know that bass means we're playing low sounds, like a bass guitar playing lower notes than a regular guitar. And your left hand plays the lower notes on the piano. So bass clef means the low notes and the left hand, with treble clef meaning the right hand and the higher notes. Then, notes are placed on this grand staff, depending on which clef the note is on, tells us which hand we play, then the specific spot tells us which exact note we play. Just to help give you a basis of where we're at, the dividing line between the two is called middle C. Everything right of middle C is typically played with the right hand, but not always. And then most of the notes left of middle C is typically played with the left hand. All right, now we're gonna practice naming these lines and spaces. It's tough, the least fun part we have here, but we gotta do it. It's gonna make you so much better at learning new songs and performing. All right, so let's just start with the treble clef. Here are the names of the lines and spaces on the treble clef here. So remember, we count from the bottom up. And you can see it's in alphabetical order, starting with E, F, G, 
Then it starts again with A, B, C, D, E, F. But it's the most popular and the easiest to do, I think, when we separate the notes on the lines from the notes on the spaces. So let's separate those out here and look at just the spaces. Reading it from the bottom up, it spells out face. So for the treble clef, remember, space face. For the treble clef then on the lines, we're going to remember every good boy does fine, which is E, G, B, D, F. We could also say every good boy deserves fudge. There's a couple different acronyms out there. Personally, I like to use space face and every good boy does fine for the lines. Okay, so now let's put this together. If a note is placed on the treble clef, we want to think, is this a space or a line? If it's on a space, use face to count up and figure out the note. Once again, remember we count from the bottom to the top. If it's on a line, use every good boy does fine. On a space, use face. On a line, use fine. So let's practice. Here's a picture with some more smiley faces. This time, we're going to name them with letters. Here's your guide on the sides with spaces and lines. So you can see the first one is on a space. We're going to count up. F, A, C. That's it. This one is C. Next one is a space. So F, then A. This one's A. And here's one on a line. Count up with every good boy. So B. First space here meaning F, then we have first line, which is E, but now we have one below that line here. What do you think that'll be? Remember they're in alphabetical order, so we just have to count backwards from F to E, making this D. Next one is a line, every good boy does. D, space, let's count F, A, C, E, so that's E, and that's that, the treble clef. Remember, space face, and on the lines, every good boy does fine. The bass clef, they're arranged a little bit differently, so we're going to have slightly different acronyms. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here's our notes for the bass clef. It's similar to the treble clef, but notice how the notes on our lines and spaces are shifted down one. Where we had F-A-C-E, now it's just A-C-E, then G. On the lines, it was E, G, B, D, F. Now we have G, B, D, F, A. Acronyms here vary. There's a few that I like. Most popular, I believe, are All Cows Eat Grass for the spaces, A, C, E, G. And the lines, Good Birds Don't Fly Away. Or another one that I like, it's nice because they're related and a little easier to remember for maybe the kids. The spaces can be always carry enough guacamole, and the lines can be good burritos don't fall apart. So you have two food related ones there. But whatever works for you. So when we read, first we look at the clef, treble or bass. Then we have to remember our acronyms. Treble is face, and every good boy does fine. Bass is all cows eat grass, and good birds don't fly away. Let's practice with the bass clef now. Note names are on the side here, and let's name them. First, space, so all cows eat, E. Next, all cows, C. Next is a line, good birds don't, D. A, G, this one is below the line, but just count down, below G would have to be F. Up here on a line, that's F. Last one here is G. Okay, okay, let's settle in here. We have two staffs with two clefs that go next to each other. So let's see what all that looks like. This picture shows the two clefs and their corresponding keys in the piano. Bass clef has the lower keys on your left and the treble clef has the higher keys on your right. There are a few notes below, above, and between the two clefs. We're only going to focus on what's between them, as those are the most commonly played. The bass clef ends at A, and the treble clef's bottom note is E. The three between them are B, 
C, D. And that will be drawn with a little dash and the note placed on, above, or below that line to indicate B for below, middle C if it's right on it, or D if it's just above it. That C in between is very important because that is our middle C. That's your middle note that the grand staff surrounds to help you figure out what note you can actually play on the piano. Let's move to the piano and help put this all together. So here we have middle C. When we see a note on the treble clef, we know it's to the right of that middle C. For example, the first E in every good boy does fine would be the first E that's to the right of middle C. So here's middle C. We're gonna look to the right to find that first E here. Meaning when we see that first line, a note that's on that first line of every good boy does find that E, we're playing this note right here. The first E to the right of middle C. And we'll keep moving up. For the lines, we had E, G, B, D, F, every good boy does fine. And there we skip the spaces. Um, but we can just fill those in now using face. So our first space is F. So here's middle C. We're gonna go to the right until we find F. And now we can play F, A, C, E, which is face. So we have our first note of our treble clef here to the right of C. And here's just the rest of them over here that we're gonna play on there all the way up to that last note, which is F right there. Likewise, the bass clef is to the left of middle C, so we're looking down here. For the lines, we have good birds don't fly away, but remember that's starting from the bottom up, so that's gonna be the lowest note down here. But let's go ahead and start towards the top, since that's the one that's closest to middle C, it's gonna be good birds don't fly away, which is A, which is gonna be the highest note that's on our bass clef. So we have middle C here. We're gonna go left, and here is A. This is that A for away, that top line on the bass clef, A. Then we're gonna go every other to find the rest. Remember, we're counting backwards now because now we're at the top of that bass clef. We're gonna work our way down it right now. So good birds don't fly away at, or sorry, A. Then F, D, B, G. Now we got it. Good birds don't fly away. Spaces where all cows eat grass, meaning we're going to start at G, which is our highest note, and work our way down. It's the G that's closest to middle C again. So middle C, here's G for grass. Now we're looking for E, C, then A. So G, E, C, A. All cows eat grass. All right, one final suggestion for you guys. Yes, you can practice this with worksheets and various examples. The best thing I have found is using an app on your phone though. There are some on the screen that I like. You can practice with the entire bass or treble clef, or start slower with just a few notes at a time. Then keep building up. If you want to reach a point of being fluent with this, it takes time and plenty of practice. It's not the most fun process, but it is very fulfilling once you get there and can learn and play any song quickly. All right, that's everything together there. We read notes on the grand staff, which tells us what hand we play with using the clefs, then what note we play. Notes can be played simultaneously with one or both hands, or just one after the other. Next week, we're gonna focus on rhythm and reading the different kinds of notes that tell us how long we're gonna play and hold each note for. Today we got down the key we play, and that's awesome. Next will be how long we play, and we can put this all together to make our melodies get to playing nice. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.